Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Mythic Monday, the best part of the worst day of the week, where we take a look at Mythic Plus through the eyes of healers. This week we're going to take a look at the upcoming affixes, the healer meta, dungeon difficulty, and also talk about the upcoming dungeons for Dragonflight Season 2. So, let's do it. This week's affixes are tyrannical, raging, storming, thundering. Feels like one of the better tyrannical weeks to push, so if you're looking for tyrannical raiding, this is a great week to get it. Make sure you're talented into your soothes if you got one. Maybe Maybe I'm overly cautious, but I like to make sure the groups I'm in have two soothers. Tyrannical Trash may not be that scary, but there are definitely still some mobs that you simply can't afford to let enrage, and it's better safe than sorry. If you're an evoker especially, you need to be pretty careful about what mobs you choose to use your roar on, as hitting several mobs with it will incur a shorter cooldown, but what really matters is that you have your soothe available for mobs that can straight up end your group, such as Void Spawns and Shadow Moon Burial Grounds or Blaze Bound Destroyers and Ruby Life Pools. Also remember that your group will be in the most danger toward the end of pulls, which is a time that it's pretty common for people to get kind of lazy and start thinking about the pull coming up. Be ready with cooldowns and CC to help your tank or anyone else that finds themselves in a pinch as mobs start to get angry at the end of a pull. As for storming, this is a pretty low stress affix in general, though it can cause some problems in certain situations. You really don't want to get bounced at the wrong time on bosses like Wise Mari and Temple of the Jade Serpent, for example, so you can't ignore the affix altogether or it can end up biting you. It's worth noting that sometimes it's not a bad idea to strategically eat a storming so that that tornado won't be there later when you know you're going to need that area to be clear. Taking a look at the healer meta, well, things are pretty stagnant at the moment. Evoker enjoys yet another week at the top spot with big nerfs looming, followed as usual by Resto Druid in second place, the A tier specs. <laughs> and then Disc Priest and Resto Shaman, which seem to have established themselves as the second tier of healing specs since 10.0.5. Mistweaver is earning the distinction of not being on a lonely tier by itself at the bottom, and Holy Priest really only landing in this spot because of the mass migration of Priest players over to Discipline since 10.0.5. I'm expecting some big shakeups when 10.0.7 drops here, where I think Evoker is going to take a step back, Shaman and Paladin may take a step forward, but... That's another video coming soon. I do think the 10.0.5 left the healer game in a lot more balance than it was previously, and I'm looking forward to 10.0.7, hopefully making it even better. Onto the dungeon difficulty, one thing that surprised me was Azure Vault dropping back down into the D tier after a couple weeks of being more of a mid tier dungeon, but Azure Vault probably has some of the worst fortified Sanguine interactions in the pool. There's some big mobs in the rings that love to sit in Sanguine and hard cast abilities that can't be stopped, and frogs hopping around taking little Sanguine baths all over the the place. It makes sense that AV would have dropped down for a week. Jade Serpent seems to have established itself as the hardest fortified dungeon recently. From a healer perspective, the constantly spawning, exploding Shahs are particularly hard to deal with. Also, Shadow Moon Burial Grounds and Court of Stars are really EG dungeons. Go figure. And the not-so-random thought of the week, let's talk about these Dragonflight Season 2 dungeons. Of course, we're getting the rest of the Dragonflight dungeons, Brackenhide Hollow, Halls of Infusion, Neltharis, and Uldaman, as well as returning Legacy dungeons Freehold and Underrot from Battle for Azeroth, Neltharian's Lair from Legion, and Vortex Pinnacle from Cataclysm, so let's break these down. I love the return of Freehold and Underrot. These are proven dungeons from the Mythic Plus era of WoW that probably don't need a lot of reworking to fit into the current game. I always thought Freehold was a really fun dungeon with huge pulls and kind of silly fun boss fights and a few different ways you could get your 100% trash count. This was one from my wish list on the most recent Mythic Monday video as well, and obviously we can see that my tremendous pull with Blizzard is finally paying off. Underrot was also a really cool dungeon, from my own memory of BFA anyway, it had some pretty tricky boss fights and from the perspective of a healer, I think this is going to be quite a challenge. Anyway, I'm pretty happy to see some strong BFA dungeons returning for another run in Mythic Plus, since these dungeons are already tested and proven solid M Plus experiences. I think these two were an excellent choice. Blizzard is also dipping back into the Legion expansion and bringing back Neltharian's Lair. Part of me wonders if this is a thematic choice since the whole patch is titled Embols of Neltharian, and I think it's totally appropriate if it is. This was kind of a pretty cool straightforward dungeon being that we've revisited both Karazans and Halls of Valor and Court of Stars from the Legion expansion already. My one thought about Legion M Plus dungeons is that they hurt pretty bad and one shot mechanics were all the rage back in Legion M Plus, though Blizzard has toned this down a bit. Legion dungeons seem to hold up really well though and I'm looking forward to 
revisiting this place. Vortex Pinnacle is a really interesting one to me. I do love that Blizzard is experimenting with going further and further back in the expansion catalog and seeing if these dungeons hold up in modern WoW, and this will be a good test of how Kata dungeons will hold up. It's obviously been a really long time since we've run this dungeon at any real difficulty level, and my memory of this place back in Kata is a little bit hazy, but the first word that came to my mind was long. Even though it's only a three boss dungeon, I remember there being a lot of running around in this place. This might be a place that is a candidate for one of our speed boosts like Azer Vault. I could also see these bosses being quite a challenge, tuned to Dragonflight standards with some pretty big damage phases going out. That said, I'm really excited for the idea of Blizz being willing to reach this deep into the old dungeon pool, and it makes me hopeful that we might someday see the return of some Wrath of the Lich King, Burning Crusade, or who knows, even classic dungeons in the M plus pool. I mean, who wouldn't want to absolutely blast a plus 22 stockades? Overall, I think the idea of mixing in old dungeons with new ones each season of Mythic Plus is absolutely awesome for keeping the new dungeons fresh, as well as highlighting the amazing catalog of dungeons Blizzard has put together over the years. Even if some of the dungeons from my wishlist didn't make it into the pool this time around, I'd be willing to bet that down the line we're going to eventually see pretty much everything. Now thinking about the incoming Dragonflight dungeons, we've only seen these on Mythic Zero, but the consensus among the WoW community seems to be that we're in for some pretty tough dungeons. Brackenhide Hollow specifically seems like a place where there's going to be a ton of damage going out and there are definitely some parts of Halls of Infusion like the Gauntlet before the last boss that look like they're going to be quite a challenge. Given the amount of nerfs that went into the first pool of Dragonflight dungeons, I'm kind of hoping Blizzard is able to correct some of these mistakes during the PTR phase so we don't have to get absolutely body slammed by the new dungeon pool as soon as Season 2 drops. So I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section about these upcoming dungeons, opinions about the healer meta coming up in 10.0.7, or anything else that we talked about. Also, you can check out my stream right here on YouTube, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 9 p.m. Pacific. Lots of healing fun going on there. Love to see you, and until next time, happy healing.